Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news report today. I'm going to continue here. Uh, DHS built domestic surveillance tech into predator drones. So that was probably part of the plan uh, to begin with, right? So this is what we just went over from Hollywood to Kansas. Drones are flying under the radar and they're part of the culture as the one sheriff says. Well, uh, of course they are, right? So they're already using them. They're using uh, Hollywood and movies to dramatize them and glorify drones. Um, and then we led off with this. Robot warriors, lethal machines, and they're coming of age. So the era of drone uh, drone war, sorry, is already upon us. The era of robot wars could be fast approaching. So this, they're talking about, of course, this X-47B that can fly a mission by itself with no involvement of a ground-based pilot. It's been like two months uh, in the air. And they're talking about autonomous drones, which according to the professor says they're more ethical as far as killing people and that taking out targets. Sounds less, uh, like you're killing somebody. We just call them targets. Uh, there are missile systems like the Patriot that can identify and engage targets automatically. So it keeps going on here saying how it's going to help humans, right? Uh, this is one system by BAE, just a little local mom and pop company. Their aim is to create unmanned vehicles programmed to map an enemy hideout, allowing human soldiers to get vital intel or information about a building from a safe distance. So it makes soldiers safer. These robots will basically spread out. They'll go through the environment and map out what it looks like uh, what it looks like so that by the time you have humans entering the building, you have a lot of intelligence about what's happening there. So it goes on here, and uh, they're developing robots that can survey enemy hideouts. So it compares it to gunpowder. Every so often in history, you get technology that comes along that's a game changer, right? Like great things like gunpowder. There's uh, things like a machine gun, the atomic bomb, all these great things that help produce uh, uh, human peace and stuff like that. And 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 and, uh, you know, f freedom. The mere thought that human beings would set about creating machines that they can set loose to kill each other, uh, kill other human beings, I find repulsive, says uh, Jody Williams. But yeah, the, uh, of course, like we've already gone over this as far as uh, singularity, which is that there, it's not going to be just humans using machines to kill other machines. It'll be the machines killing humans, and then, and then we'll see how ethical it is then. Uh, Seattle becomes next city to use crime prediction software. Seattle has become the next city to start using crime prediction software. They announced that two precincts in the southwest and east will be using the software known as uh, PredPol, short of predictive policing. So it's estimated to be twice as effective as a human data analysis working from the same information. It's all part of our effort to build an agile, flexible, and innovative police department that provides the best service possible to the public. <laughs> God. So... Uh, you know, a nice little public relations statement. It sounds like uh, a consulting firm or something. And we know what they're going to be using, mathematical algorithms, similar to the ones that use in earthquake prediction. And it's going to make our revenue collectors uh, safer on the streets. It's going to make them safer, right, like the military. A K-12 student database will share information with private companies selling educational products and services. So says, look who, uh, check out the part in bold to see who's behind this database. Education Technology Conference this week in Austin, Texas, will clang with bells and whistles as startups eagerly show off their latest wares. But the most influential new product may be the least flashy $100 million database built to chart the academic paths of public school students from kindergarten through high school. In operation just three months, the database already holds files on millions of children identified by name, address, and sometimes social security number. Learning disabilities are documented, test scores recorded, attendance noted. In some cases, they track the students' hobbies, career goals, and attitudes towards school or indoctrination, and even homework completion. Local education officials retain legal control over their students' information, but federal law uh, allows them to share the files and portion of the database with private companies selling educational products and services. Well, here's the whammy. The database is a joint project with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which provided most of the funding, the Carnegie Corporation of New York, and school officials from several states. Amplify Education, a division of Rupert Murdoch's News Corps, built the infrastructure over the past 18 months. Brown University creates first wireless implanted brain computer interface. So Crypticon says in a little comment, make sure the firewall is configured properly on that thing. Researchers at Brown University have succeeded in creating the first wireless implantable rechargeable long-term brain computer interface. The wireless BCIs have been implanted in pigs and monkeys for over and monkeys for over 13 months without issue and human subjects are next. 
something that uh, most of you have already probably seen or heard of these uh, shock handcuffs. Uh, it says here, handcuffs 2.0. Will the restraints of the future have built-in shocks and sedation? But this, again, posted March of 2013. So it goes on here, says that uh, it's called apparatus and system for augmented detainee restraint. What the heck does that mean? This handy new device can be configured to administer electrical shocks when certain predetermined conditions occur, as well as being activated by remote control. The patent application compares this function to the workings of a stun gun or a taser. So also, the cuffs could potentially be configured to administer a liquid, a gas, a dye, an irritant, medication, sedative, a transdermal medication or transdermal enhancers. Um, so it goes on your chemical restraint, paralytic, and medication prescribed to the detainee and combinations thereof without directly involving human law enforcement officials so they can be safer. Cuffs could also be programmed to work like an electric dog collar, shocking a detainee if he ventures outside a predetermined zone. But don't worry, before the cuffs do their uh, thing, a little warning light will flash and the cuffs will beep. So this, remember the, uh, wearing those little ankle braces are kind of, you know, when you're on, um, uh, what is it, uh, you have to stay at home. I mean, that's the first step. The application includes a photo of the prototype, which suggests these cuffs are well past the concept stage and could soon be available to a cop near you. And another sheriff tells residents to arm themselves. Here's the video. You can go there and check it out. It was, I'll post the link. It was one of the few public messages the sheriff has made concerning the recent crimes. So I believe this is in yeah North Carolina. So I remember the Wisconsin sheriff just told the residents to get in the game and arm themselves and defend themselves. Uh, cops run into motorcyclists, threaten to ticket him because of breaking too fast is against the law. So again, this is a video. You can go in and check it out. Las Vegas Metro rear ends John Paul Rosero and then blames him for breaking when someone was behind him. At least four killed in separate shootings in the San Francisco Bay Area. So they said here, uh, officer involved shootings in the Bay Area. The first killed occurred on Saturday in San Jose where two officers fatally shot an unarmed man who collided with three patrol cars during a high-speed chase. The officers said the man presented an imminent danger and was possibly armed. Then you got this, how budget cuts could affect you. And look at how the cuts could affect government operations near you. And you, I guess. But um, it says that uh, automatic spending cuts took place last Friday are going to uh, touch on a range of government services, so transportation. So they're talking about interla international flights are already experiencing delays at the airports. And, and what they're talking about is this sequester already screwing up airports, says Napolitano. So it may take a while for a full impact of the sequester to hit Americans, but some people are already feeling the pain. says we are having to reduce or eliminate basically overtime, both for TSA and for customs. So we're already seeing the effects, including lines 150% to 200% as long as we would normally expect. But, you know, and then the other reason is, is what? That they have fewer controllers. So this goes to show you, of course, that already there's too much security. I mean, God forbid, you know, ooh, we don't have enough TSA scanners or, or screeners now. Well, thank God for that, right? But the problem is, is what? Is that the fact that they're telling you that the transportation is, is uh, you know, coming to almost a screeching halt as far as the lines, waiting lines. This goes to show you that it's definitely not free market. That, uh, that the whole transportation industry itself, whether it's rail or, um, or air travel, is, is, is pretty much an, an extension of the government, kind of like the Postal Service, which is um, public-private. Of course, defense, right? And uh, the defense just gets a gargantuan uh, budget, and, and they're saying that they need more. In fact, Hagel, who was just appointed to the Department of Defense, uh, you know, saying that, you know, hey, uh, give us the money or we're going to get attacked and we're going to go down. And, of course, you got this BS story about releasing 2,000 low-risk illegal immigrants from jails across the country um, the same day that the uh, head of, uh, I think it was DHS, uh, was retiring. And they blamed it on sequestering. Food safety, ooh, so the, go the government who, uh, who makes sure that your food is safe, even though they won't, um, you know, as far as laws, like I said, I'm not really for this, but you've got all these laws, so many freaking laws, and you think they can't make a law? You think they can make a law to basically make companies say what is genetically modified and what isn't? No, they won't do that. Uh, they'll put out all these salmonella scares um, uh, for different types of food, 
uh, to scare the crap out of you. Um, we'll also, what, to put ractopamine in your meat to allow growth hormones and antibiotics to be put in your meat and your milk. They won't allow raw milk. Uh, they won't allow people to grow their own gardens. So, fucks food safety. <laughs> the... <laughs> I mean, it's just a complete joke that the, that that somehow your food is going to be less safe because the government doesn't have a bunch of money uh, uh, to give to these a holes, right? That basically represent pharmaceutical companies and companies like Monsanto and Cargill, right? They just go back and forth, and there's revolving doors to poison Americans. So I think that cancels that out. Um, what else do you have? Healthcare? Oh, do we even need to go there? <laughs> uh, national parks. This is uh, services and that are likely to be cut. And most of these uh, places, too, they really overcharge just to spend a night camping. They overcharge with firewood because you can't bring in your own. And you're harassed. That's the thing. You go to get away and you go to camp. You go camp with your friends and uh, you have sheriffs that sneak up on you. Uh, literally, they, they sneak up and they did it to me and my friends every time that we went camping. I haven't gone in a few years, just like I haven't gone to the airport for that same reason. I just give up on it, right? Uh, because they'll sneak up to, uh, on there about 11 o'clock at night. Uh, we're relaxing by a fire, and uh, they'll sneak up on you, peek around a the tree. They actually did that. My friend was like, what the hell? And he's like, he's like, what the hell is that? And there was a sheriff peeking around the tree. So that they have the sheriffs, and they have the local police, and they creep up on you in your campsite. So you got to deal with that. And let's not forget our, our DNR, right? The guys that go and harass people for not having a permission to go fishing. You know, or drive uh, you know, all the way across the... Uh, I remember uh, one time when I was like 10 years old, um, you know, having my, uh, just my, my father cast to get my pole rigged up for me and casting it out. And, uh, yeah, and uh, our gear got stolen and he got a big ticket for it because he didn't have a license. And, of course, all the other people um, who have a few beers and uh, you can't do that at all anymore. So, and then it goes in and it says that the nation's 2.1 million uh, government workers may be required to take furloughs if agencies are forced to trim budgets. So it says here the workers would be offered 22 days each, spread across more than five months, and lose 20% of their pay over that period. Re-education and indoctrination, can't cut that. Got to, got to, you know, it's all about the children. It's all about the future. Got to make sure that they're good debt slaves. So, you know. Congressional trips overseas will likely take a hit. Lawmakers typically travel on military planes for fat-finding trips to Afghanistan or Pakistan. So maybe Congress can take a, a you know a pay a pay reduction and then they can fund uh, their little trips over there for uh, color uh, instituting cover uh, revolutions and regime changes for corporations. Let's not forget nuclear security, right? Nuclear security. This is where a nun broke in just to prove how weak our na our nuclear security already was. So oh yeah, the tax collection said millions of taxpayers may not be able to get responses from IRS call centers and taxpayer assistance centers. Could, the IRS says it could result in billions of dollars in lost revenue to the government. And the last, of course, is labor, where they dingle that out in front of you, right? It says here that uh, 3.8 million people jobless for six months or longer could see their unemployment benefits reduced by as much as 9.4%. The fact is, is that there could be more work and there could be um, more jobs if the government wasn't in the way. Um, and of course, they go on f occupational, fewer occupational safety and health administration inspectors. So, yeah, it says here, uh, so now uh, work sites are going to be more dangerous, right? Because you're not going to have to spend gargantuan amounts of money for permits to update uh, after they come and pay for licenses and permits and fees and inspection fees. So, I hope it makes you feel guilty, all right? You know, all the interest, all the money, all the profits will keep going to these big companies, uh, pharmaceutical companies, uh, defense contractors, uh, big banks. And they want to keep putting money into that, so they'll dangle that other stuff out there. Stopping the failed war on drugs would make uh, more than pay for the sequester cuts. It's an easy way to cut $83 billion. In fact, this year's subsidy, or corporate welfare to Wall Street, $83 billion, exactly equals the amount of this year's sequester cuts. You got $190 million uh, going to Egypt in aid by the United States. The U.S. steps up aid to Syrian terrorists for regime change. $60 million clams are given them. U.S. taxpayers spend more on Israeli defense than Israeli taxpayers. That's right. Here's all the rates, 2013 to 2018, $3.15 billion per year. But don't worry that the military can't do flyovers anymore. The USA to Israel is going to dodge this sequester cuts.
That's right, Israel could be exempt from any reduction in foreign aid due to sequestered.